there are some people who just still won't get over Russiagate. Uh, I'm just going to right now just let you guys know before I just read the article. I personally felt that the whole Russiagate investigation was a waste of time. I understand for a lot of people, they were emotionally upset when Donald Trump got elected in office and a lot of people were finding someone or something to blame. And look, Donald Trump has a lot of problems. He's got a lot of issues. There's a lot of things I don't like about him. And I'm pretty sure all of you have some things you disagree with uh, Donald Trump. But he was elected as president of the United States. He won, in fact, dare I say it, he was more democratically elected in his primary than what happened with Hillary Clinton during the Democratic primary. And so at the end of the day, while Clinton did get the popular vote, we don't live in that world. The Electoral College supersedes the popular vote here in the United States. And so with people holding on for Russiagate, investigating this ridiculous conspiracy theory for two years, two years we've been in, you know, we've had the Mueller investigation. People were holding on to hopes that it would impeach Trump. Um, now it's been released. It's quite clear that there's no collusion. And... I, a lot of media outlets and a lot of diehard critics of President Trump just won't get over it. And I understand a lot of people put time and effort into this, but it was a conspiracy theory to the end. And recently, um, there was a whole bunch of rallies, especially in New York City, where and in Times Square specifically, where you had a whole bunch of you know anti-Trump supporters uh, or, or you know people who really believed in RussiaGate, basically creating songs and chants about uh, you know with the favorite tunes of my favorite things it's not unusual and michael tracy and uh you know aaron mate were basically calling out the hypocrisy and the ridiculousness of this that you know russiagate is still being talked about look corporate media the establishment media Rachel maddow in particular were holding on to this and really using it as their bread and butter and spreading misinformation and lies to the american people trump was elected you got to get over it if you want to defeat trump don't hold out hopes for a ridiculous investigation that proved Nothing. It was a waste of time. In fact, dare I say it, I'm a little, I feel a little sorry for all the people who wasted their time. I mean, their, Vice recently did a documentary on the people that were investigate, that were part of the Mueller investigation, and the opening shot is two people eating Chinese food. I didn't care about the Mueller investigation. I actually wanted to eat some Chinese food. Uh, go ahead, find it. It's on YouTube. You'll, you'll see it. I think it's either Vice or Vox, one, one of those two that actually did it. But with Russia... All what this has done is really escalated tensions between the United States and Russia. And Russiagate needs to be dropped. I, I understand for establishment media, especially for Rachel Maddow, you have to find something else to talk about, like, I don't know, our corrupt system, money in politics, uh, democratic establishment, uh, trying to prevent progressives from getting into the Democratic Party, uh, climate change, you know, just our, falling, our failing infrastructure. You can't just Space hold on to it. Whoa, you are not going to let that go, dude. My God. I know I know it's going to get you angry. Holy shit. I might. Hey, heads up. Don't talk about blowing up the uh, no, satellites in I space. I we got but, a shirt where it's like, I'm also mad about space debris. Yeah. Well, hey, that's a good shirt idea. Yeah. But, you know. Eventually we'll have t-shirts. Uh, eventually. But, but one more final note, too. Or not final note, because I want to open up this floor to you mm -hmm. guys and really get your thoughts on this. When we talk about Russiagate, we have to have a responsibility to remember that it's going to leave a severe impact on our international relations with Russia. Because guess what? Putin and Trump will not be around forever. There's going to be a new president of Russia someday. Putin, don't come after me. And there's going to be a new president of the United States. Trump won't be around forever. And we're going to be stuck with the aftermath of this ridiculous conspiracy theory. If we want to have a better future, we really want to, one, call for free fair elections. And we also have to get money out of politics. Russiagate isn't the way to defeat Trump, and holding on to it isn't a way to defeat Trump. You defeat Trump with policies, and the Democrats wasted two years, establishment media wasted two years, and yes, even some independent media outlets wasted two years by holding on to hopes that Russiagate was going to lead somewhere. It's not. And uh, now's the time to really look at the people, both who were progressives, libertarians, independents, uh, that were really calling out Russiagate for what it was, a conspiracy theory. And we have to let it go. Otherwise, there will be more dangers and consequences from this ridiculous uh, Russiagate story. We have to move on. It's over. Deal with it. So I want to add in a little bit, just kind of recontextualize this, because I think it made a lot of very good points. But I think there's also just to clarify our position, because in this world, it's, we have to re-clarify like five times to make sure everyone in chat is completely with us on this. Are we saying that Russia doesn't interfere in U.S. elections? No. Are we saying that Trump hasn't had nefarious connections at some point in history with Russia? No. Are we saying that the U.S. doesn't get attacked by cyber attacks X, Y, or Z from other countries? No. 
we're just not combining all of them into one thing. Because here's the difference. The way we look at it, we say, Trump is corrupt, he's a billionaire donor to uh, campaigns, he's corrupt, you go after his business stuff. That would have been a much better investigation that had a lot more teeth to actually go into Trump's actual finances. That would have been helpful, but that wasn't the path that was gone down because if you go down Trump's corruption, then you open it up to a lot of the rest of Congress's corruption as well, and they don't want to go down that path. If you went just into country to country attacks, then you may have to bring up how the U.S. is still the best, has the history of doing the most election interference of anyone, and that might be a little hard to do. Uh, maybe you can go through other, but the Russiagate story was really the idea that you could say that Hillary wasn't at fault for losing, the Democratic Party did nothing wrong, Trump is a terrible traitor who needs to be impeached, and the media is fantastic and did everything right exposing this. Those are the pillars that Russiagate allowed. It was the only path that the media could abstain themselves for getting Trump elected by covering his empty podium and not covering Bernie Sanders. It was the only way that Hillary could say, I didn't screw up the election, someone else screwed it up for me. It was the only way that an outside person could be responsible for everything and the person that is now president who they dislike would not, uh, who would be responsible and could be ousted. It was the only path that this perfect basket could take place because they couldn't admit that they're separate. All the pieces are separate and they don't have anything to do with each other. And like I said before, it's like you have 50 fruit baskets and you pick out the one that's rotten. There were many better options. The media, if they really wanted to take down Trump, they could have gone after, oh, he, he's not doing health care like he said. He said he would get out, out, outside of wars and he didn't. You could go down a list of a hundred items. But of they chose Trump. not to. They chose not to. They chose yeah. because if they did that, that would start benefiting progressive talking points and it would start hurting corporate talking points that they went down. So they didn't do that. Right. This is watching Russia again happen is watching what happens when this uh, standalone complex of different people coming together, all trying to protect themselves, all with the same enemy right. happening and they screw it up. And now Trump is going to say forevermore, anything that happens against him, fake news. Yeah. And he's going to have some legitimacy with even more people that al than already believed it before this came out. Right. So I 100% I agree with you. Um, I would tack on a couple of things. First of all, I think the single strongest case that could have been made against Trump is his violation, his flagrant violation of yeah. the Emoluments Clause. Yeah, right. Um, like Jimmy Carter divested from his peanut farm, but we've got a president who hangs onto his hotel and regularly rents out the penthouse suite at inflated prices to Saudi monarchs. Really? That's what the emolument clause is for. Um, but no, we, w we had to go with the most sensational claim that our president is actually a Manchurian candidate that actually is uh, the, pup the puppet of a foreign government who helped him get into office. Now, I understand why people bought that, that they believed that. First of all, it's incredibly sensational, and if it was true, that would be unprecedented and amazing. It, it's, it was what Glenn Greenwald res refers to as a Tom Clancy-esque spy novel. Um, the other reason that people believed it is it was being pushed nonstop by every major media outlet. Whether you read the New York Times or watch MSN or watch CNN or you know you read Vox or whatever. Everyone was saying it's true. We're gonna get him. There's a fantastic uh, compilation clip. I forget the YouTube channel to put it together of like three years of news people saying the walls are closing in. This is the beginning of the end. Blah 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 blah. blah over and over and over and over and over and over and over. I get why people believed what they were told. The other thing I totally believe is why people are now still holding on to it, even after we've gotten a summary of the Mueller report from Barr. We will eventually see the full Mueller report. I have, I have full confidence that what Mueller said is in the report and what Barr reported is in the report is in the report. I have no reason to believe otherwise. As much as people are going, ah, it's definitely not the thing that Mueller said it is and Barr said it is, it's definitely something totally different. Uh, I get that people are clinging on to what they've been told is true for the last two and a half years. That makes perfect sense to me because why? Humans have a lot of cognitive dissonance. Humans have a very hard time being told the thing you believe is true isn't. It isn't true. People want to cling to their beliefs and people have formed an identity around this belief. And 
in the face of sort of irrefutable facts to say, you've got to move away from this. It isn't true. People are resisting that. I'm That's the, why you see people out right. holding vigils and holding up signs and saying, doing, oh, doing, Mueller, and, be and, our savior. And, and doing sing-alongs. But remember, Mueller is a guy who was the one who helped us lead to get into Iraq. And one final note, this is from, from chat, Freedom Fox 1. He mentioned something positive about Russiagate for one organization in particular. Russiagate was also useful for their military-industrial complex, and that is so true because here's the thing, it has caused a, de- a, you know, a, a huge rivalry right now between the United States and Russia, and we can't afford a military conflict between the United States and Russia. It could lead to the extinction of the human species, and uh, we need to move past Russiagate. We're going to talk a little bit more about that specific angle of the Russiagate story in our second hour. Yeah, Yeah, especially in our second hour. Hey guys, do you like the video? If so, be sure to give us a sub and hit the bell for notification. You know how YouTube is. And if you have the time, check us out on our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter pages and check us out at hardlensmedia.com. Be sure to check out our Patreon if you really support what we do and want to support us at Independent Media.